What's up, fam? Welcome back to another rendition of Hot D, the Westeros Kickback, our official House of the Dragon recap podcast here on Recap Kickback. I'm your host, Chappelle, and with me again to talk about an electric episode of House of the Dragon, my favorite episode so far, it's the Mistress of Whispers and the Keeper of Receipts, Maester Mari. Maester Mari, we got a lot to talk about today. Yeah, we do. How how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Sorrows, sorrows, prayers. Uh, yeah, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. Pour one out for one of the goats. We'll get to that mm-hmm. shortly. But of course, remember, thank y'all so much for being here and tuning in to weekly coverage of House of the Dragon. Uh, it's been a fun ride. We've got a lot of exciting episodes to talk about and that we've been talking about. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Also, if you are new here to Recap Kickback, we talk about a bunch of other stuff as well. We just dropped our Black Barbie uh, documentary review with Latanya Starks and Gia Worthy. That should be up in your podcast feed or on the YouTube channel as well. We got Supercell coverage coming as well to to talk about uh, with the... uh, was it good though podcast jazz and jason uh it was a fun time recording and that should be up on your podcast feeds this thursday and then we got a lot more coverage coming your way so stay tuned and make sure you subscribe to recap kickback uh wherever you get your podcast or make sure you subscribe and click like here on this youtube channel to keep up with all the stuff we have coming your way and to make sure that you don't miss out any of any of this house of the dragon coverage um and remember, if you are new here, we do have Maester Mari's book corner at the end of every podcast where we're going to talk about the episode that we just saw. But then afterwards, Maester Mari is going to give us a little insight into how things may be different or similar in the book and maybe where the story has deviated just a bit. And from what I can tell, Mari, you got a lot of stuff to add to the book corner this week. Um, it's just a lot of nuance to add, should we say. Like uh, the show is still very good at being um, really on brand with the books and, and not deviating like another show, <laughs> Game of Thrones. Um, <laughs> so it's just like nuances and little story choices that they are choosing that are that are different. So I'll go over that in the spoiler section. Yeah, and we've been getting a lot of positive feedback about the podcast and about the book corner specifically. And so if you have feedback, please know that you can send that to us. You can leave it in the comments. You can comment on whatever podcatcher of your choice, or you can email it to us at recapkickback at gmail.com. And we will be happy to read your feedback here on the uh, podcast. Um, But we don't have any feedback to read today because we have to get into the nitty gritty of it all. First things Mm -hmm. first, our big story of the night, pour one out. It seems like we've lost some major players here in the Dance of the Dragons. Uh, Mm -hmm. Where do we start? Rhaenys, Aegon, Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) Maelys, you know, what what is happening, Mari? We got bloodshed this episode. Yeah, rip uh, rip to Rhaenys, the queen that never was. Um, And never will be. And never will be. I know your fave. I love her. In the moment of the first episode when you're like, she's my favorite. I hope she's here for as long as possible. I was like, mm, sweet, sweet <laughs> summer child. Especially since I hope. <laughs> yeah, especially since I knew that the, the date and the time of her when her passing would be. I was like, oh, that's that's so unfortunate. And the gate the the House of the Dragons creator still ain't shit because in the book she was born on this in the seventh moon on the seventh day in 74 AC, which when translated would be this month and this day. So this would be her birthday that she July is July been- 7th, Lord, yes. Lord, <laughs> Lord take me now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the man. The creators ain't shit. <laughs> so. I have several issues with what you just said, uh, yeah. but <laughs> man, I do love me some Ray Nice, but I mean, you know, I said in the past, I basically lean team green, Mari, and as far as being team green, though, we lost Aegon, and that's not the worst thing in the world. I kind of think this was a win for uh, team green today. What do you think? But did we lose Aegon? Did, I, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we did it. I mean, we look like we see his body, and he, he was charred. If nothing else, he's he's burned. Um, so maybe we just have Aegon who can not, no longer perform his duties. Uh, but he took a direct hit, and he took it from Aemon. Um, you saw this coming. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like, he can't keep getting away with this. Like, how is Aemon, <laughs> like, just... 
just killing everybody. This man has <laughs> no, no qualms. Um, yeah, this was like this. The Battle of Rick's Rest is like this is the kicking off point. This is like the seminal battle. This is where it's like, okay, things are getting real. And I mean, we've been saying it for the past three weeks. It's like, oh, it's almost war. Oh, it's almost war. It's almost war. And it's just like now it's like, okay. War is here, y'all. This is what y'all wanted. Are y'all satisfied? Because that was a lot right. of bloodshed. <laughs> and I, and I feel like some people TV? are kind of like... <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like, you thought you wanted war until you saw what war does. You yeah. know, it's, there's a reason why Viserys was so peaceful, you know, because mm -hmm. you think about war as like this abstract thing where you send off these faceless army people, these red shirts, go off to war, they fight, mm -hmm. you fight, they fight, and then you get to go back home and just celebrate once your side wins. Uh, but in reality, these people that go to war have faces and families and friends exactly. and people and loved ones. And you know, you don't get to pick and choose who dies in war. And in this no. war, it seems like one of our biggest or our first biggest casualties is going to be uh Rainice, who did yeah, sign up for this. She she, she volunteered for this role. <laughs> She really, really did. And it was so badass to see her and Melly's the Red Queen um, here. I mean, ugh, this is the first, this is like technically the first time where we've seen dragons fight proper. You know what I'm saying? Not a, not a chase, but a fight scene. And it was, I think I, I would say it was everything that we wanted. You could see the use of claws and, 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 and sharp, um, you know your your fights and stuff and then the flames and you know like it's just it just was so good uh, like if this is where the money is going put, like this is where it needs to be going this was just amazing <laughs> yeah and yeah. i mean it it brought a scene to life that i like i said i've read a, like a, what feels like a hundred times at this point and it did it like such good justice that it, mm. it surpassed what I thought this this would be. I loved how, again, this is the second season of House of the Dragon, but it's like the technically the tenth season in the Game of Thrones world. And when you're getting all of these different battles, you have to make them stand out from the last big battle. You know what I'm saying? So mm. Brooks Rest here being like on the coastline, but surrounded with in the forest, but also just being really small, it made it feel like a like this is a battle you, I think you will remember. Like this mm. will go down in history with like the Battle of the Bastards, or the Battle of the Blackwater, because it's it's very. I think I think the look of it was just so good and very. It stood out a lot, um, and, and then of course the her heroics of Rainey's and um Millie's because I mean she it, she had she could she could have left like twice at least you know what I'm saying? Yeah. she was like she she could have left but she she valiantly went to her death and I want to ask you do you think she was just like fed up you know what I'm saying because she she Sorry, had a clear she had a clear path like she was literally like like on her way and this is yeah. after Sunfire went down his sunfire yeah. went down. Her and Vagar had already like um, did the tussle. Yeah, did the tussle, <laughs> and yeah. she got up and she was like going. And I and, and then but she she turned around. She said attack Millie's and turned around. Like honestly, I, I'm wondering if she was just over it. <laughs> you know, like uh, yeah. I, I mean, we know these people care a lot about their honor. There's no honor mm -hmm. in showing up and then being like, oh god, and then running away. I like, I, don't get me wrong. Strategically, that's probably the move. Get out of there. But yeah. I mean, there's probably a safe argument to say that if Vagar chased after her, she probably wouldn't have got far anyway. You know, I, I don't know how fast these dragons are in comparison, but we know Vagar. Yeah, is Vagar's bigger. not that fat. He's bigger, yeah. but he's not fat. Yeah. He's not as fat. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So yeah, yeah. so she yeah. probably could outrun him. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, but she said she chose to stay to fight. And Eamon wouldn't seed like the upper hand by flying into Dragonstone. So it, mm. to, if she wanted to get away, she would have gotten away. But then it's yeah. also like, well, what would she have said? Like, uh, Aegon yeah. might have been hurt. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure I killed most of their army. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know I saying? knocked out a few of them and then I came home, you know, like, which, which honestly, <laughs> it's in the grand scheme of things, it's better yeah. than dying. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. It really is. <laughs> um, but no, she volunteered for this. You signed up for this, you know, so yeah. you can't say, like, mm -hmm. I'm going to be the one to go out there. Let me do it. I got you. Because she honestly wasn't even given the directive to go. You know, we right. uh, saw her volunteer herself. Rhaenyra does not respond to her saying, you know, I'll just take Maylise and go handle it. Rhaenyra, I don't know if her silence is like a, like, you know, silent acknowledgement of go do what you got to do 
or mm -hmm. if Rainice just kind of rolls her eyes like, fine, I'll damn, I'll do it mm -hmm. myself, you know? So you can't take that action, fly out there, and then come back and be like, yeah, remember when you had said that, I, like, and I said I was going to go, <laughs> Change the change the plans. I really don't want to do that no more. So I feel like once you get on the dragon, you have to see it through. Uh, yeah. And honestly, this just feels like she was outmaneuvered. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. Yeah, she had it. She had the upper hand. But this really is like a they they call him the kingmaker. But this really is the shining moment for Kristen Cole. You know, this strategically really caught Rhaenyra's group off guard. They sent mm -hmm. the dragon thinking. Okay, we're gonna knock out some of these red shirts, some of these soldiers. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we we the first ones to deploy our dragon, so we're gonna get the upper hand. Um, and only to find out that Vagar is hiding in the woods and mm -hmm. ready to for this type of fight because Vagar not might not be as fast as Maylise, but it's bigger. And mm -hmm. you know, at this point, we having like you know, uh like a standoff. You have this your dragon versus my dragon. We'll see who comes out on top. And unfortunately for Rainis. It is the other side. Amen does make short work of her, but not after, not <laughs> until we see the interference from Aegon. So, what did you think about this whole situation? Like how this um, the strategy session uh, played out with Kristen Cole's big plan to kind of ambush whatever dragon they send their way? Because you had to know that they were planning this the whole time. Yeah, exactly. I thought you know I thought it was a good plan. Um, Aegon throwing the spanner in the works is kind of like, dang, like, like mm -hmm. he throws the spanner in the works. But if you really think about it, if he wasn't there, would they have won? You know what I'm saying? Because again, Melis did manage to get away from Vagar uh, on mm -hmm. a few occasions. It was just that last one that she, she couldn't. If she didn't have to deal with Sunfire first, maybe she could have dealt a, a, a blow uh, to the armies and everything and get away like swift enough because having mm -hmm. a big dragon is great. Having a big dragon that's been bloodied in war is great. But there is something to be said about speed. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and yeah. About speed and uh, effective leadership. And I think Rainey showed that. The problem is it just ended up being a, a, a two-on-one fight here you know what i'm saying and they didn't even realize it was going to be a two-on-one a two -on fight you know what did they uh i have a question about Aegon. we we I, I started off by saying we potentially lost Aegon. we have not seen his dead body we saw right. what looked like it could have been his dead body but i you know we don't know. We actually, we really didn't see Rhaenys' dead body, but I don't know if she survives that far from heaven um, and lands and, and, and still makes it. But Aegon, there might be some ambiguity to whether or not he's alive or not right now. But yeah. um, was this by design? Be uh, because Aegon shows up, but not without prodding from Aemon. I mean, I, I think so, maybe Aemon's words might have been the thing that actually got the ball rolling on Aegon making this big move. I don't, I don't think so. Uh, I will talk about the deviations in the book corner right now. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm trying to keep it here yeah. to what we, what we watch. But from what we watch, no, I, I truly think that it was Chris, Sir Chris and Cole and Amon were, it was just going to be them. It was just going to be them. They did set the trap knowing that a dragon would come. Sir Kristen sent them out in the daytime knowing a dragon would come. That was his plan. But his plan was for Vagar to take on whoever came. Now, Aegon, I think the reason why Aegon leaves is not because of anything that Aemon said. It's what um, Allison says when she tells him to do nothing. Like, basically, mm -hmm. you're useless. We did this not because we believe that you're the king, really. It's we, we want the power, and we're doing it in your name. You don't need to be the one doing it. So I think... The, it, that moment that she basically tells him everything that he just does not want to hear. He knocks over that flag and he's like, I'll show them. I'll show them all. And I just love this sharp contrast between him and Rhaenyra because like you said, Rhaenyra was like, I'm bet I'm about to go too. But Rhaenys and all her counsel, just like what uh, Aegon and all his counsel said, you cannot go out there. You cannot fall. If you fall, then you know, all is lost. And Rainice had the better dragon. She's better prepared. And she knows deep down she's expendable. So uh, she took the one for the team, as you would strategically do. Just technically kind of how Eamon is taking one for the team, even though it, even though it feels like he's more, he's not really taking one for the team because he's, he's better, you know. But Aegon let those inner thoughts and all the drinking get to him. And he went out there trying to be a hero. And it it's 
cost him dearly. And it shows you exactly what everybody's been warning against. Like if you're the figurehead, if you're the, the, the person everybody's supposed to be fighting for, you have to kind of stay contained. You have to um, stay alive, but also be a symbol. If I'm at that battle and I see him get his butt whooped like that, and I happen to survive because I don't even know how many of them people survived that. Right. And you go, you go and tell the, the small folk like, "Yo, this dude Aegon, he sucks." <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, it's it's not just like you possibly losing your life; it's you doing something stupid that makes people lose faith in you. I love what Aegon just did. <laughs> so yeah, we we saw a little bit so about that was- adding. Well, we saw a little about uh, uh, that in Game of Thrones. I think was it was it Joffrey who went to war and then coward, and they had to like cover it up. Like, hey, um, well, he yeah. was the king was busy. You know, the king couldn't be there. Blah blah blah. Um, when uh, and I think it was Tyrion who actually ended up on the battlefield. Yeah. You know, really yeah, showing that like, okay, yeah, that we're really into mm-hmm. like the, the crown is behind this fight, and we are fighting alongside you. And it just mm-hmm. makes a different statement. It's when you're successful. If you're not successful, mm-hmm. then you know the results may vary. Um, but. Let me push back against what you said. Okay. All right, so here's here's how I read the episode when I was watching it. Okay, I watched it happen. Aemon goes to the in front of the small council. Aegon is there, and they're all strategizing without Aegon. Aegon is like trying to chime in, and Aemon is just sunning him left and right. He's like, "Hey, we're we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Yep. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know you. We're not doing that." We he's like, "Why can't we have Heron Hall, bro? Nobody cares about Heron Hall. We're moving on." And so Aegon is realizing that everybody is making strategic moves around him and not taking him into consideration at all. They don't care what he yeah. thinks. He is he is a feckless leader, to say the least. And um, I think that Aemon knows his brother. I think Aemon knows his brother the same way Laris knows uh, Aegon. And they know that if you tell Aegon to do something, he's going to do the opposite of whatever you say. Uh, we saw this last week when Laris goes and tells him, like, hey, you know, they, they keep saying that you're trying to run off the battle. Wouldn't it be crazy if they want you to do that? And he's like, you're right. I won't do that. You're right. Got you. So in this episode, Aemon not only just undermines his brother, but in front of the small council, he talks to him in High Valerian Ooh. and just says since you so damn smart you come up with a plan because if not i'm gonna just keep being in charge of this and Aegon, his incompetent yeah. ass he can yeah. barely even speak high valerian to say something back he struggles through that moment and he is completely neutered and mm-hmm. i think by doing this amen is just pushing him and pushing uh-huh. him and pushing him to do something reckless and wild so that amen can do exactly what we saw happen because when uh Aegon shows up amen has a chance to come out and basically break up the fight between uh, Aegon and Rhaenys while they're fighting on their dragons. He's coming at them, and he burns Aegon. It doesn't even look like he hit Rhaenys at all. And then I start to wonder, did you do that on purpose? Because Mm -hmm. life would be a lot better for Aemon if Aegon is not in the picture. Just last week, Aegon is bullying him in the brothel, got him walking out all lip noodle outside the uh, the whorehouse and all that good stuff. He's picked on him before in the past. Um, but on the battlefield, these strategy conversations and the political side of the Game of Thrones, Aemon is superior. And by taking mm-hmm. Aegon out, he can really step into Aegon's role if that happens. So when I watched the episode, I, the whole time I was thinking, dang. What if Eamon did that on purpose? Wouldn't that be crazy? But I do hear what you're saying about how it's yeah. probably not the case, but I can't let it go because it worked out so perfectly. You know, oh, the yeah. one person standing between Eamon and the crown is now pretty much, I mean, like pretty much dead as, as far as this minute, uh, you know, talking about the show. And um, the next person up in line, if Eamon is gone, I mean, Aegon is gone, it's probably Eamon. So I just think it, if it didn't happen on purpose, it's crazy coincidence that it did. I, yeah, no, I think everything that happened on the battlefield was definitely on purpose. And, uh, and he was definitely sunning him. I don't know if he was doing it intentionally to get him to come out there, but I know I agree. Amen. This Amen. I think Amen is doing this because he's still mad about, like you said, the brothel. You, he, you were, mm-hmm. you were making fun of me at the brothel. Well, I'm going to make fun of you here in, in front of this council and show you that I would be the, the better king. But I don't think he was expecting them because when he was on Vagar hiding and he said, you know, he looked up and he saw him, he said, idiot. And he's, he didn't, he was like, dang it. I, I don't think he was expecting him. But from that moment on, everything was strategic because he told Vagar to fall back. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. he really wanted to protect Aegon. 
the moment he saw him, he would have got they would have double teamed her. They would have jumped right knees. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but he let he let Aegon go into that fray first. He was like, mm, yeah, just let's uh, see what happens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he definitely um because when he came, remember Aegon was like, Oh, thank God, because he was getting yeah. that ass tore up. <laughs> he thought he was about to he thought he was about to have some backup, and instead yeah. he got burnt. Um, and again, I think this is such a big win for Team Green. Not only you do have, uh, you know, Rhaenys, who we know is formidable. She's a good leader. She is the hand to Rhaenyra. Which, I mean, they don't know that, but you know, she is the probably like the wisest advisor to Rhaenyra, the one who Rhaenyra, uh, who she holds her opinion the highest. Um, so you lose Rhaenys, you you lose Maelys. And you get your idiot king out of the way, the guy who's making all the dumb decisions. I think that if you're if you're uh Allison, you're probably really broken up about the loss of your son, but she don't even like him like that. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like <laughs> I feel like you know there were losses on both sides, but Aegon being out the way, it's it can only help Team Green. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think um in the book, this is this is like a decisive victory for Team Green. That's why I'm kind of like I, I think I talked about it last week. That's that's why it's kind of weird how they they changed a little bit of the tone of the first three episodes because what it should have been was Team Black racking up uh wins like this. Like we'll talk about Damon and the Heron Hall stuff, like they are dragging it, like they are dragging. Because, yeah, I'll, again, I'll talk about that part in the, in the book club section. But, like, it should have been, like, Rhaenyra racking up wins. The Burning Mill um, in the book went down as, as a victory for the Blacks. It, it, it sh She, you know, should have already had a host by now. Like, it, it was very interesting that they're putting them in this, like, really, really underdoggy kind of position to me at this at yeah. this point when their losses, when their losses are, are definitely about to start racking up. So... Very mm -hmm. interesting. Very interesting to say the least. But uh, I, I love that. I love that battle. It was so good. It was very good. It was very good. And I and I do appreciate the storytellers maybe putting the blacks in a in a position where they can be the underdogs because I think it makes them more rootable. It's like the greens are already less rootable than the blacks are. It's just a fact, and that's why everybody is like, oh, I can't believe y'all are team green. Whatever, or, you know, whatever. But mm -hmm. I think that. I think that yeah, the logical like like a choice because of the way the the story is told, it makes you want to root for Rhaenyra. And if Rhaenyra's in here just mopping people up left and right, it makes this like, a little bit anticlimactic because we do know. I mean, if you if you've seen Game of Thrones, you do know how this ends, right? And so this is just showing us how it gets there. And so I think you know, adding a little bit more suspense into some of these battles that could have been a little bit more one sided on the other side, and and giving some wins to the green, it does make for a better uh, viewing pleasure. It makes it a little bit more exciting TV as well for me. Uh, I, I think yeah. it's definitely interesting because if you think about da uh, Daenerys's um, storyline, she was mm. like, yeah, I guess she did rack up a, a lot of losses before she started winning. Yeah, started losing a game and then mm -hmm. winning. Then she started winning, and then they did some wild stuff with her at the end. Yeah, you know? it's just yeah, yeah, it's just it is just very interesting to me. But I did did really really like also Kristen. Cole, you, so you just get knocked out halfway through the battle. We just that's a that's a hallmark in Game of Thrones. We've seen that before. You wake up and it's like, damn, the battle over. What happened? You know, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> who hit me? Let's get hit? up. Let's go. Yeah. The person burns to ash. Like, what is yeah. happening? Now that was wild. You know, <laughs> like, oh shoot, you did. My bad. Damn, I must be lucky. I must be the lucky one, huh? I ain't get burnt. Um, yeah, big episode for Kristen Cole. Oh, but also you said uh, this is. Great for Kristen Cole. I mean, yes, but also no, because mm. we said what would have happened if Rainey's turned around and came back to her council. That's yeah, true. nobody really likes Aegon, but like, oh y'all, my bad. Like the king is kind of like Chris. Right. In a, in a, in a way, sir, you had one job. It's a big job, right. but yes. you had one job, and it's to protect the king. So yeah, yes. but it, I feel like it's a mixed bag because it's yeah, you're yeah. right. It's thing that nobody likes so it's like if he's gone we cry and we move on but mm -hmm. you know i don't think allison is going to take it like that either you know what i'm saying like she she don't like him that much but that's still her son you know yeah. um and she's but taking also, a lot you're, of the, you're a white knight like literally yeah you have one, one job, job. <laughs> one job. <laughs> yeah. um since we brought up allison uh 
interesting episode for her for sure. Uh, you know, we see that the potential loss of her son, um, and uh, you know, Ray Niece as well, which is basically a family member too. Like, this is gonna be a tough one. She talks about some of the grief that she's uh had in these last few uh episodes or you know, over the past few weeks with the loss of her grandchild, uh, and various other losses, honestly. And now she sits here in front of Laris, having recently drank the plan B T. Mari yeah, of the moon tea, <laughs> the moon tea. Yeah, I wonder yeah. what you're drinking that for, Allison. What's been going on? Exactly. Yeah, uh, and it. Uh, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> <whatever. laughs> but look, she probably wants to keep that under wraps. But she invites into her room the uh, master of whispers on Team Green. It's Laris, and uh, Laris. Is going to peep the the plan B T. He sees the little yeah. uh, the little teacup and he knows exactly what's up. It's it's a full circle moment because remember when they were introduced to each other, it was because he was like, oh, uh, Addison, uh, I heard there was a tea delivered to Rhaenyra's room. Mm -hmm. Blah 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 blah. Messy queen that he is. So yeah. and it's it's the thief for the same person. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's horrible. That, Kristen Cole, the man with a the man with a thousand uh, plan BTs. <laughs> Very that. Oh God. So it, it's a full circle. And yes, and he knows. And mm. I love how she's just like, dog, my uterus hurts right now. Bro, Get I don't the have it out of my face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could you leave me alone? And and he really is just in there, just kind of displaying his superiority. Like the fact that he knows it, he's doing his whole like like I got I know something about you and she like bro leave me alone just could you get the hell out of here um because he's saying you look a little different lately what's been going on you something about you has changed and she like I don't know half my family's dead we're at war <laughs> you know you my son sucks he's he's out here killing people hanging hanging rat catchers I don't know Laris what do you think it could be and Laris kind of looking at the key like mm, no could be something so um yeah not great. And then she Not talks great about supporters too, like because he's like, "Oh, do you now doubt what Viserys said?" And she's like, "It, it don't matter. Her it supporters don't matter. Are gonna believe it's exactly what you said last week. It's uh, her supporters are gonna believe what they believe. Aegon's supporters are gonna believe what he believes. Some the the war is gonna get fought. Lots of people are gonna die. Somebody's gonna ascend the throne. Like that's it so is what it is. It but is that, that's what it is." But that's the show we signed up for. You know, I've, I've been seeing a lot of discussion online. Allison, this is all your fault because you misheard what v Viserys said. You mm -hmm. knew he didn't want your, kid, your son on the throne, all this other stuff. Let me tell you something. That war was going to happen regardless. It didn't mm -hmm. matter what Allison saying that to Otto did not strike off the war. Otto had already been planning. They said, Otto, when Otto got to the small council, he said, send the ravens. He didn't say which ravens. He didn't say, he didn't say okay, write a raven to do this. He said, deploy the, the, the measures we have been taking. Allison was shocked. Shocked. Round the people was, up. Right. <laughs> this is what we've been practicing. What did we rehearse? Why do we rehearse? You know, like, it was... It wasn't about Allison's revelation at all. Honestly, mm -hmm. this is Viserys's fault. Viserys named Rhaenyra the 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 new queen, and that was always going to be divisive. Had he just like what you abdicate? Is that what the word is? The throne? Mm -hmm. Had he just given it to her while he was still alive? People probably would have still observed his uh, leadership. He's still there, yeah. you know. But because he stayed on to his very dying breath. Um, that people were able to maneuver the people that were uh that were uh pledging fealty to uh to Rhaenyra were dying off. You know, he really stayed and overstayed his welcome too long before uh, he could yeah. put this into action. That and he let the people who he knew would be like the main um like detractors opposition, yeah. yeah, run his kingdom while he was like while he was in yeah. that position. He knew that it would be like Otto and, and Allison and their family would be the ones that would be the main opposition to Rhaenyra's reign. 
and yeah. yet you kept them in positions of power until you yeah. died. Like, and, and, then and you kept giving them babies. Them. You know, right. you gave them other heirs as well. Yeah. But Sarah, <laughs> this is your fault. <laughs> like, you mm -hmm. know, you can say what you want about Allison, Busy Otto, team. Rhaenyra. But yes, the man, mm -hmm. <laughs> the man was out here wilding and he let this happen. Now, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. Now that it's happened, like Allison said, there's nothing you can do. Allison yeah. making some grand announcement that, you know what? I got Viserys's, uh, I got his dream wrong, y'all. It was the wrong Aegon. Ain't nobody finna retreat. The Blackwoods and the Brackens have already killed each other. Damon's already taken Harry Hall. The moves have already been made. And these supporters are going to support whoever they want to support. Uh, you know, they've been yeah. planning on this for a very long time. So not the best episode for Allison. I'm sure she'll have to deal with a lot more moving forward now that Aegon is potentially, uh, you know, down, uh, down and out. Um, and with the loss of Rainice, I'm assuming she just made a big enemy in Corliss as well, Mari. Uh, how do you think Corliss is going to take this now that his, uh, his queen has fallen, his princess has fallen? Oh, Corliss is not going to take this well. He's not yeah. going to take this well. And, and I think they've been doing a good job of just showing how much love the two of them have for each other. Because if you notice, every episode we've get, been getting some sort of love scene between the two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, just last week, we got Rainey's talking about how she was afraid that one of them wouldn't make it because it is war. Corliss is about to be mad. Yeah. I mean, we even got, and I should I guess I should have saw this coming because we got the scene where uh, Rainey's goes to visit Corliss at work. So she goes <laughs> down to the shipyard to see her man and she comes across uh, Alan. Al mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, what is his name? Alan, the, the something. Alan of Hull. Alan of Hull. <laughs> she comes to find <laughs> Alan of Hull. And when she finds him, she's looking at that man. And they're like, you got your daddy's nose. <laughs> she could see Corliss all look exactly over alike. <laughs> when he stood right next to him, I was like, damn. Is that what? Steve Tom's actual real? son? <laughs> 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 this AI is crazy, you know. Um, <laughs> but she sees Corliss all over that boy's face, and she starts mm -hmm. to realize, "Oh, you're the bastard! You're you are his other kid." And it's a shame that I, you haven't been here with your family. Like she immediately tells Corliss, "Like, why are we keeping the bastard away? We should be embracing him." So the opposite of what Catelyn to... Stark would do. Yeah, I mean, but that's basically what yeah. she said. She like he yeah. should have grown up around us, yeah. and instead of yeah. yeah, instead of shutting him off. And look at this, he's he didn't pull you from the uh from the the sea and the saved drink. your life. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So I should have known something was up because dang, you know, when she she not even tripping about the 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 boat the side baby. You know, I was like, yeah. dang, you know, she a real one. <laughs> she is. She 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 knows. She knows what's up, and she's like, I can't. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was <sighs> big hits to Corliss, big hits to Rainey's. Again, pour one out for and, Rainey's. And I think he like he's old enough that I think he it's like it was a, a before time type of baby. Yeah. Oh, oh, like mm -hmm. before them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's even that's even more. Yeah, yeah, that's even better. Cause you know, at that point, she like, I would have been a good stepmama. What you mean? You know, exactly. uh like <laughs> so. Yeah, tough one. And I'd love to see if uh, Alan of the Hall decides to uh, avenge his stepmama. Did, is did I get it right? H-U-L-L of Hall. Alan of Hall. Yeah. Fine. Alan <laughs> of Hall. <laughs> I wonder if he going to try to, uh, if he's go now going to be more empowered since this was basically his stepmama. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, Adam's still out there too. Yeah, and he's got a twin. Dang, she never even met the twin. That the is brother. the twin. Yeah, yeah. She didn't meet the yeah. She mm -hmm. didn't meet the other one, you know. So yeah, that's tough. One. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Damon. <laughs> Cause Damon didn't do nothing in this episode. Uh he was no, just no. there at Heron Hall in the hood, chilling, uh, getting tormented by the witch who um <laughs> who is just there as well, tormented Damon. Uh, you know, we got a lot of like dream sequences and like uh like premonitions and stuff like that from Damon because he's in Heron Hall and Heron Hall is haunted. 
Um, and also Raggedy. You know, we see we get Laris <laughs> talking about how Laris is like, bro, they took Heron Hall from my family. Big deal, you know. Um, I, I control, yeah, I control all the money and it's ghetto over there. So they can have it. And Damon being at Heron Hall is the distraction that the Greens need to make this plan work because Damon is so tied up in this place that nobody cares about and dealing with this witch. So the witch's name is Alice. Yeah, Alice Rivers. Yeah, so he peeps that Alice Rivers, her name is Rivers, so she a bastard too. A bastard. Um, yeah, he peeps he peeps that she's a bastard, but he also very quickly picks up on she's not like everybody else. She's a she's a witch, and um, she is basically there uh, giving him things to sip on. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure what her point is, but we do get a lot of of insight into maybe what Damon is thinking with some of the visions that he's has having. Was she a really big part of Damon's story in the book? Um, no, but they didn't meet like this. This is they yeah. met like this. She, like I said, yeah. she's not a big part of Damon's story, but she is a part of somebody else's. Um, yeah. So what did like, you think about this scene? I thought the scene was good. I, it, it was literally just to give you the history of Heron Hall. That, that's what mm -hmm. the scene was for. And to give you the, the to explain what, what's going on. Like she's like, she's like Heron Hall. It's built different. It was, it blood was basically in the mortars because like from the moment that black Heron started making it, he like enslaved the people in the river riverlands to make it. And at, they were dying while building it. So they say there's like blood in the mortar. And then like she said, they cut down all these weirwood trees, which we know from Game of Thrones are very sacred. And he, he basically like said F the old gods when he, while he's building this monstrosity and using those weirwood trees as like, Timber, timbers for for Heron Hall, or just like she said, your bed is a weirwood tree. How's that? How, how are you sleeping in that? I'm like, oh, that's a setup. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put them in a because, haunted bed. <laughs> exactly, a haunted bed because weirwood trees. We we saw it all in Game of Thrones, and it's was without it within the books. Like weirwood trees can imbue like magical powers to people, in a sense of like being able to see and, and, and being able to green see. Like if you like lay your head up against the weirwood tree. Uh, it might Im imbue a dream upon you, you know what I'm saying, um, to like warn you or whatever. So like, it, I, I she was just here to tell you why Heron Hall is so haunted and explain why he's having these dreams when he himself is not a dreamer, like per se. Mm -hmm. It's the place doing it to him. And basically it was just letting all of his intrusive thoughts. It was just like letting out all of his intrusive th thoughts. He just able to play out all of, the, all of the, the thoughts that are just running around in his head. And it's annoying. I'm like, you're over here sleep, dream, half waking while shit is going down. Like, sir, get it together. Yeah, I, I, um, I'm optimistic because I know Damon. I know Damon. Okay, we met Damon in season one. We know how Damon get down when he wakes up finally from this. When he <laughs> finally gets away from this haunted mansion, he gonna he gonna have he gonna be on a rampage. You know, so I'm very I'm very much waiting for that. But while in the haunted mansion, some of these visions, um, one of the ones he has is basically a dream where he's talking to young Rhaenyra and um, she is saying, oh, you know, how do you feel now that I'm on the throne? And, you know, you have to face the fact that my my dad loved me more than he loved you. And that's why he didn't pick you to be the king. And the, the people are asking him, so are you going to, you know, make a play for the crown? Like, is this your big, are you ready to make your move? Do you want to take this from Rhaenyra? You, I mean, you're going to let this little girl that you basically raised and married, um, but just basically raised, uh, just be in charge of you. That'd be wild. I can't believe you're going to do that. And if this is one of his intrusive thoughts, in my mind, this is something we should really be concerned about. You know, is Damon actually going to make a play for the throne or is he some type of devoted husband to uh, Rhaenyra? I'd wager, no, he's not that devoted to her. But uh, I think that this scene really sets up that he could he could be thinking of other options, Mari. Again, I think they're dragging it because Damon loves power. And we've said it before. He loves power. But he more than likely, he, he loves his family more than he loves power. You know what I'm saying? But he also has an ego. He also doesn't like to be ruled. You know what I'm saying? So it's just that it's just that war within him of like not wanting to be ruled by Rainier, wanting to have power, um, not really like wanting to hurt her. Because, yeah. I mean, 
if he really wanted it to be easy, you know what I'm saying? And I, mm-hmm. I think that's where, where, where it's at. It's these sides within him that are warring, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I don't, I, I truly don't think even, even if I hadn't read the book, I wouldn't believe that he would be like, well, you can't start a war within a war. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just doesn't, he's not that stupid. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, mm-hmm. In Heron Hall, uh, we see that he does get to finally talk to a representative from the Tullys, but it's not Lord Tully, it's his grandson. And this Oscar Tully, he shows up, he's like, hey, you know, you were looking for somebody to talk to? I got you. I, yeah, I'll let you know what my grandpa is thinking. They talk, and Damon has no patience for Oscar Tully. He's saying, your grandpa is incapacitated. He can't talk. He's on the way out. Why don't you just kill him? Kill him right now. Smother him with a pillow so you can get your inheritance, and then y'all can come fight for me because right now you're wasting all my time. This was wild to me because you just showed up, <laughs> and, and you making some like some crazy demands. Um, right. And then yeah. his next... <laughs> His, well, his next move after that is like, all right, well, since this kid can't help me, uh, go get the Blackwoods. You know, they they mm-hmm. love me. They they pledged fealty to uh, to Ray Ray. Get them. We're going to go to battle with them. Mari, I thought in last episode, the Blackwoods really didn't make it. It didn't look like there's a lot of Blackwoods uh, <laughs> left to fight for Damon. Am I tripping? We'll see how many is left, but they did lose a lot of, at the Battle mm-hmm. of Brain Mill. Yeah, and he but they're know. still in our yeah, he, right, right, right. He doesn't know. He hasn't sent any ravens out. That is that is a stupid thing. Like now, your enemies know your movements before your your party does, which is just like it's very stupid of David. Um, but yeah, so and and it's smart because like okay, I can't talk to the big dog because he's very infirmed. You're 14 and you're saying you can't do anything. So everybody's right. Your vassals are just doing whatever they want to. So I'm going to grab the ones that have declared for me and I'm going to have them march and you're not going to do anything about it. So bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> and in one of his uh his days is from drinking whatever the witch gave him. He basically wakes up at the table <laughs> in the mid conversation with a representative from the Blackwoods. It's Willem. That's the little kid that uh that, that was him. uh that's mm-hmm. the little kid that was uh fighting uh for Rhaenyra's honor in uh in in the halls uh yeah that was wild I I didn't know that little boy grew up so fast but uh I recognized the name Willem Blackwood uh yeah who uh, I'm assuming is in charge he's the head I mean I guess so now like <laughs> <laughs> I, like you said after all the people died they because um they did say that uh what was his name. Um, Samuel Blackwood died at the burning burning mill, and he was the um, Lord Lord of Blackwood. So, I guess Willem is now at this point. And it was nice to see him back, and it makes sense because, like, it was it was that was from episode four last season when um, he had killed the the Bracken, and it was like sixteen plus mm-hmm. years ago. So, yeah. Uh, anything else from the episode that we need to talk about before we get into the book spoilers or the book corner? Um, like where the fuck was right near dog? Dog, like, what was the, that? She still, I mean, I guess it was taking her a while to get back from going to visit Allison. Yeah. Like, is she walking? Um, <laughs> because like it took two weeks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of the hallmarks of, of Team Black is that their leadership is missing. You know, uh, yeah. Damon is kicking it at Heron Hall, just chilling, yeah. literally just chilling. And just Rhaenyra th- <laughs> then went on a, a mission to go talk to Allison while everybody else is trying to take control of what the next moves will be. J- Jace, Jace, Bela, they're useless. They just have they have they but I, they people are trying like so hard to. Oh, I love them. I love them together. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but they're trying so hard to maintain control. And I don't know who Sir Alfred is, but he gotta go. You know these these mouthy uh, um, council yeah. people. They gotta go because they can't get nothing done with this void of leadership. Rhaenyra was going way too long, and you know I understood why she went to go. You know talk to Allison, but. Again, the war started a long time ago. This you just left your post and with nobody in charge, but your kid who you haven't even really trained up to be in this position. Jace isn't ready for this. 
Right. Um, I, I think he was handling it himself, but it was, it was just so weird to me because they said, oh, so Kristen marched a fortnight ago, two weeks. He had already yeah. taken Rosby, Stokeworth, and he's in the middle of taking, or, or we saw him take Duskendale, mm -hmm. um, which uh, ripped to the Battle of Duskendale. I mean, it didn't, it wasn't that big, but whatever. Um, and like, she's still not back. <laughs> I'm good. Cause it, it felt like that all happened at the same time, you know, unless yeah. I thought he wrote out around the same time that Rainier. It felt like they left around the same time. Yeah. That yeah. is correct. Yeah. So, I don't know. That yeah. was, that annoyed the hell out of me, but yeah, Jason, <laughs> Bela, Jason Bela here. Bela's is um, giving some really good information. They're they're playing in her face, but it mm -hmm. is really good to know the movements of your enemy. Like what? Why are we acting like that is not good information? Yeah, um, sir. Sir Alfred said, "Well, if you know all that, why you ain't just burn them with your dragon?" And she like, "Okay, well, why don't you do it with your dragon?" Oh wait, I forgot. You ain't got one. Shut up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that you got your degree and you know every damn thing. Right. You know, um, um, yeah. These people are taking control, and it honestly, it's really like that on both sides. You know, um, both sides, the the people who are in charge are not really wielding that much control. It's the council and their closest uh, allies and their the hands, the masters and mistresses of whispers that are really pulling all the strings right now. While there is this big void in leadership, I think the women that should be in charge, Allison and uh, Rhaenyra have been pushed to the wayside in their, you know, trying in their peace treaty talks. Uh, and everybody is just making whatever moves they think is best. It's working out a little bit for the greens, but not much more than it is for the blacks. Like it, there's like, uh, these battles are, they're big battles, but there are so many losses and casualties on both sides that, you know, proper leadership would definitely, uh, be helpful in these times. You know, Otto Hightower is nowhere to be found. Damon and Allison are far, far away from the, the conversations that are happening, uh, happening at the council, and, you know. And that's why when Corliss walked up in there, everybody was like, oh. They all sat up, like, oh, oh shoot. <laughs> yeah, somebody with some clout, you know, somebody whose yeah. name means something. Uh, yeah. yeah, this was a fun episode, but uh, yeah, it's really, like, it was exciting. The, the big fight scene at the end with the dragons was amazing. Uh, there were definitely moments where, you know, you really couldn't tell, like, okay, is she going to make it out? Is she not going to make it out? Is Aegon going to make it out? I thought Kristen Cole might have been dead for a second when he got, when he, not you know, bumped his head. Uh, so mm -hmm. a lot was going on. But overall, I thought this was, was one of my favorite episodes of the series so far. Yep. I, I mean, honestly, it was it was an amazing episode. I'm very interested to see where the like the next uh, episode goes, like what they're gonna do there. So, yeah, this is gonna be it's gonna be fun. What is um, what is uh Corliss's other uh, daughter? I'm sorry, uh, granddaughter's. Um, where does she go? Um, Raina. They sent them. Raina. Raina. They, yeah. yeah. Where does she go? Her. She. They sent her. Joffrey. And then Aegon the Younger and Viserys. So Joffrey Valeria, mm -hmm. the, the third son from Lenor, and uh, her two sons with Damon, Aegon mm -hmm. and Viserys. She, they sent her to uh, the Vale with them. To, to gotcha to the Vale to her aunt, Lady Jane Arryn. So so that Lady Arryn would send an army and to protect yes. the dragons. Yeah. And to protect the dragons, yeah. She took the mm -hmm. dragon eggs, and I've seen online this week that those are the same dragon eggs that Daenerys ends up having in Game of Thrones. Yeah, apparently for the in the TV canon, the director from last week, uh, Miss Patel, she confirmed that those are Daenerys' dragons. I think in the book, it, it, it doesn't work out like that. That's not how that Them works. dragons kicked yeah. it in them eggs for a very long time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and in, in 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 the book, it, it, it's not Cyrax's because that those are those are eggs from Cyrax, uh, um, Rhaenyra's dragon, but mm. in the in the books, the the dragons from um, Daenerys, Daenerys' dragons, I think, are from Dreamfire. So, and it's a whole other thing. Like they were stolen by a paramour of a a princess. And she took them across the narrow sea and sold them to a Pentoshi prince. And mm -hmm. that would make sense how they ended up. How we saw it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? 
Uh, no, let, yeah, let's get to the book corner. Let's get to the book corner. If you want to tap out now, uh, feel free to go. Make sure you come back next week for more House of the Dragon coverage and tune into other recap ki kickback content here on this network, recapkickback.com. Make sure you go to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash at recapkickback. But if you want to stay for the book corner, now is your time. Uh, get seated because Mari is going to fill us in on what's been going on um, in the history books. Um, you know, so um, we'll catch you all next time unless you want to stick around for the book corner, which starts now. Mari, <laughs> in, the, in, in the show, in the show, yeah. Allison was going through the history books at one point. And I remember thinking at that moment that I don't know if she's looking for maybe like validation for what Rhaenyra just told her, um, mm -hmm. you know, about, Ooh. you know, about the dream. The friends, or yeah. if she's literally just reading the history books because she's like, how are we going to get out of this? Like, how, how, <laughs> what are we going to do at this time? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. Do now that. what are we gonna do? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and so so I thought I thought about you when I saw that scene because I was like, okay, Mari reading the book, like, what are we gonna do now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think you're right. I, and that's a that's a great point. I think she's trying to find what Rainier was saying about mm -hmm. the Prince Out's promise and, and all of that. But uh like like we overhear her telling Jace, it's passed that it's passed down verbally from the queen or the king to their their um their heir. And I, I love that scene of the the hearing Rainier tell the the Song of Ice and Fire, the, the prophecy of the prince that was promised over the montage of like both sides getting ready for battle as her and Jace are sitting in um their own library in front of the skull of Meraxes. Um Rainey's uh the original Rainey's Targaryen's uh dead dragon. Um it was actually a really like beautiful and, and touching scene. And again, those who don't study history are like doomed, doomed to repeat it. So I thought that mm -hmm. it was it was very interesting that she's telling her history and Allison is trying to find what she's talking about in her books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when it comes to this episode, give us some context. Wait, uh, well, let's start with this. You've already said that uh, the, the green team, um, they, they are victorious in the books, but it didn't quite go down like this? Uh, no, it was a little bit more ambiguous about Eamon's uh, true goal. And you you had it right. Like in the books, it was a trap and it was a two-on-one uh, trap. Like, oh, in the an ambush. Books, yeah, it was an ambush. Aegon was Aegon and Amon were there with Sunfire and Vagar, and Cole knew it. Cole also had like scorpions to try and take out um Rainy. So they were they were very much expecting somebody. I think they were hoping it was gonna be Rhaenyra. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it and, almost was. Yeah, it yeah, it almost was. And like in the in the book, when when you ask me is Corlys gonna be mad? Corlys is pissed in the book because he's like yelling, "It should have been you!" <laughs> like in the book, <laughs> like, my bad, G. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> but she she flies <laughs> she flies directly into the, into this trap. Um, but in the book, it what happens is um, her when her and Sunfire are tussling, like it, it's the same thing. Her and Sunfire are tussling. Maylis is like like deboing sunfire and then vagar just falls on top of both of them like he comes from the sky and just kind of just lands on like body drops both of them as they're tussling so yeah. and then they all and there's like fire and 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 tussling they all land at the same time and that's when like rainy dies she she's burnt she's burnt to a grave they, they're like oh she's still uh melis is dead She's still like attached to her and she's burnt to a crisp. And then Sunfire and Aegon are very badly wounded. Sunfire's wing is torn, his belly is clawed open. Aegon mm. is burnt on half of his body. The other, mm. like every everything below his his like his uh he's crushed from like the hips down. Um, but he's alive. Yeah. He is alive. About, about um, as alive as his uh, raggedy <laughs> grandpa was. He about to be on that Viserys, uh, that Viserys regiment, the milk of the poppy every night just to make it. Uh, exactly. That's tough. 
Mario, it was a good old fashioned slobber knocker. You know, it was a Basically, fight. A yes. fight, fight. <laughs> yeah. So, so they did. A, I think they did a great job of like because like in the book, that's basically it. it's like they tussling. Then Vagar said, "Stop all this nonsense and just lands on all." Vagar gets up and like, oh, okay, cool. While the two of them are just in there, like, uh, like you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, and and they and then even in the book, there is a one line mention where they're like. No one knows if Amond intentionally meant to hurt uh, Aegon, but once mm. the dust cleared and the smoke settled, Aegon and Sunfire were badly, badly hurt, and uh, Rhaenys and Melis were, were dead, basically. So it, it, it's more ambiguous in the book if if uh, Amond was really trying to get him. They made it very plain to see here that he was. <laughs> yeah, he went straight <laughs> he, at him. He's the one straight out of, and even when that part when Kristen Cole is like running and looking for Aegon, and he sees Aemon standing over him, and he's like, "What are you finna do? What are you finna do?" Right? Are you about to? Are you're you not finna. finna you trying to kill the king? <laughs> like right now? Right. Like in front of me? In front of my salad? Yeah, <laughs> right in front of my salad. <laughs> and and Aemon's like, "No, nah, Najee, he can stay. <laughs> he can look at him. <laughs> um, yeah, what is he yeah. gonna do now? Yeah, so." Yeah, it, it, it just it's just much more ambiguous in the books. Um, they they do say that like Rainey's as she's coming over the hill and she's like coming to participate, she sees both the dragons, and in the book they're like, nobody knows why she didn't turn back, but she You're right, like, like they're like she probably could have turned back, but she didn't. She faced it head on like a brave warrior and blah 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 blah. So why I do think you think that is? Good job with that. Um. Again, she's just she's just a badass. She really is. And again, her dragon wasn't anything to sniff at, but that her dragon it was the oldest dragon on their side. So that mm -hmm. is a problem that they yeah. have now lost their oldest dragon. I have a theory. Is mm -hmm. there any world where Rhaenys feels responsible for the war? You know, they they threw up in her face last week where they said you could have stopped this. Why you just didn't burn them when you had the chance? We didn't even have to be like this. And she kind of just like, all right, whatever, get out of my face. It's none of my business. Yeah. Um, but is there any world where she thought, okay, you kind of right. I could have put a stop to this a long time ago. Let me try to do my due diligence to knock this out. You know, let me make up for that that uh, lack of action she did the first time. Yeah, I think she really just, she's been warning us all, like all season. She's like, we do not want to go to war with dragons. Like, this is not going to be good. If we start warring between the dragons, like, the shit is not going to be good. And then it's gotten to, it just got to the point where she's like, well, fuck. We're here. Let's go. Let's ride. Let's do it. And like she said, Melly's is, is the only dragon that amongst them has been, like, battle tested and, and all of that. So... Mm, she she, yeah. Yeah, she had belonged to a, um, a, a princess before that and had, had fought in, in different, I think, donors wars, I want to say. But yeah, so... Dang, that is tough. I mean, I'm still, I'm still kind of... I mean, we just watched the episode. I'm still kind of just like... Yeah, I know, it's I so sad. Yeah, yeah. She, but, but I mean, she went out like a G and I love that she kind of got that moment to take Aegon and Sunfire out like by herself. I mean... Again, a Aemon did As mostly, yeah, did, <laughs> yeah, mostly. Like, yeah, he did flame them because you know that's why it's like, like dragons are technically like they're like fireproof. So it's like mm -hmm. if you're throwing fireballs, you're hitting it's the, right. the person. <laughs> like, it's for yeah, the, it's it's not you know. So like, um, yeah, it it that that was so cool. And and her the uh, her and and uh, she got some swings in on Vagar too. Yeah, she got him a couple times. I was like, hit him, yeah. get him again, get him for yeah. me. <laughs> and so, so, and like you said in the books, Rook's Rest was, uh, this was like a victory. This was seen as a victory for the Greens, even though like Aegon is, ugh. like, yeah. yeah. And it, it'll be interesting because like Sunfire, it, it, in the book, Sunfire is so injured, like they can't even get Sunfire back to King's Landing because yeah. he, he can't. Just, she can't support herself like on her wing. So she just like stays around the battlefield for a while, just eating, like eating the dead people and and, and surviving like that for, for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. 
Mm, that's tough, man. I, 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 if it wasn't Ray Nice, I'd probably be in here celebrating um, as as a you know. I, I I've been trying to figure out my real stance on whether or not I'm Team Green or Team Black because Team Green. I mean, Aegon just sucks. He just does, and I really can't get behind him that much. But I do like Allison. I do. Uh, y'all can never make me hate her. She does nothing wrong. Uh, so <laughs> for me, I'm like maybe I'm just Team Allison. I don't know. At this point, it's kind of like um, like now that the war has like started, it's like there's no there's no. It's no point of being team green, team black. Anymore. Yeah, you know what I'm saying because yeah. it's like it's like you declare your allegiance, but now we're at war, so some shit's about to go down. So like as a viewer, we are not participating. Just yeah. just be ready. But again, both sides are going to do some egregious things. So it's just kind of like, yeah, and you know, look, like and, and, uh, and again, we know how this ends. There are no winners. There yeah. are no winners. We there might yeah. be a winner this portion of house of the dragon but there we seen game of thrones <laughs> we know what happens we know what happens to the targaryens we are very aware of what happens to them <laughs> um, so you know pick your side right now ride it <laughs> out but like you said mari well, it's war it is war yeah. and um nobody wins when the family feud that was either uh jesus or or, or Jay Z, one of them said that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything else from the books that we need to recognize from this episode yeah, so it's very interesting what they're doing with House Tully. I don't know. So um, I don't know if they're doing this because they're, they're like, this is kind of embarrassing. But George R. R. Martin, like for some reason, he decided to name a whole house after different characters from Sesame Street um, as like a joke. Yeah, so yeah. so Grover Tully, who is the, the current Lord. <laughs> My of, mouth wide um, open. Oscar as well, like the Grouch. I'm gonna walk out. Yes. Well, so no, <laughs> but but even more, like they they have Oscar here, who is in the books, but in a in a different capacity because I don't know if they did an amalgam of the two characters, but the um the name of the character who's taking over as Grover is incapacitated is actually Elmo Tully. Oh. So Elmo <laughs> Tully is supposed to be is supposed to be in charge right now. And that is Oscar's um, father. So when mm. Oscar was like, "Oh, my father died or whatever," I'm like, "I'm I'm like confused because I'm like, no, Elmo, Elmo was part of Elmo was a part right. of the Dance with the Giants. So Elmo was the one who, even even though Grover Grover pledged to Rhaenyra when he was hell and healthy, but he also voted against like. Uh, women ruling or something like that. So mm. when the dance breaks out, Grover is infirmed, but he wants to support Aegon. Aegon and mm -hmm. Elmo, who is his, who is his grandson at this point, um, and who is a man running the Riverlands, is like, Nah, gee, we're gonna support Rhaenyra, mm -hmm. and he he eventually supports Rhaenyra. And then Oscar, his son, is his second son because his first son's name is Kermit Tully. <laughs> yes, exactly. So that's <laughs> like, I think the show is just like, this is stupid. We are not about to like commit to this whole Sesame Street ass bullshit. Get, get sued by Sesame Street, you know? <laughs> that's what it is. They're like, so Grover and Oscar are like kind of like you can like get away with those, and like, but Elmo and Kermit, I think Tim, like those must be like <laughs> yeah, they trademarked. <laughs> but look, when Big Bird the Dragon shows up, give me a call because that's all I'm waiting on. Uh, George R. R. Martin, you will pay for what you've done. You will pay. You will pay. One day you go get yours. Uh, speaking of you go get yours, I like those words from um. From um, was it Lord uh, Declan? What was his name? Darklin. Um, Darklin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's the about to get his head chopped off because he uh, will not bend the knee. Um, and he's like, Kristen Cole, you a wild boy. You gonna get yours one day?" And Kristen Cole's like, "Sure, but in the meantime, I'm gonna chop your head off." And mm -hmm. you know, they they they're really trigger happy here on uh, House of the Dragon. Like you you say you don't like somebody, you say you don't trust somebody's. Uh, uh what the their their bloodline or you know you don't you don't you don't understand maybe where their kids came from you call somebody a bastard you can get your head chopped off we even saw a point where i think Aegon even told Allison hey you watch your mouth watch your mouth and she's like what you gonna do what you finna quickly do? Uh -huh. right 
because they've gotten to the point where if you question anything too much, uh, you can die. And so uh, we saw that. And um, we also saw that the reason why they went after, was it Rook's Rest, was because Staunton is on, uh, he's on the council with yeah. uh, with Rhaenyra. So he's not there to protect Rook's Rest. Uh, so we see a lot of Rhaenyra's um, like council people or the people who are her close advisors, they're all getting feeling the effects of this war very quickly. Corliss loses yeah. Ray, uh, Rhaenys. Yeah, Stanton loses uh, Rook's Rest. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, her son, uh, uh, Darklin, his uh, his son is on her council as well, I think. His son accompany, accompanied her to King Landing. He got yeah. oh, yeah. back to the news that his dad died. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, being Team Black just sounds a little ghetto to me. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's why I told you all of her lords were from the crown lands and that's exactly where where they were marching on um mm. last week so it, it's smart like they're like they're making her closest advisors like uh second guess her um yeah but I do want to say the biggest departure from everything right now is like I've been saying for weeks Damon had captured and secured Heron Hall before blood and cheese so him mm -hmm. just wandering around lollygagging having stupid dreams right now is so annoying because again it they're like they're making it sound like team black is down and out because a lot of the a lot of the early battles and early skirmishes and early victories come from Damon taking over Heron Hall, gathering a large host. They at by this point they have a huge host gathered at Heron Hall. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is nobody's like, there. That, that is like scaring the river, like the river lands and trying to, to help out. Like it's very annoying. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's is it annoying as a book reader or annoying as somebody who's like, Hey, get your head in the game. You need to get in the fight. Cause both. he is just chilling. Both. Exactly. It's like, he's the whole point. She like, she begged him to, to marry her in back in season one, because he was like the, the, the strong hand that she needed, like when it came to fighting and they're out here fighting without him. Like, so it, mm -hmm. it's, it's annoying in, in both senses of like reading the book and in the show, it's like, sir, we don't have time for these little daydreams. <laughs> like mm -hmm. we don't have time for you playing around with this woods, witch. like we need to like, and then why would you eat anything from her? Like you wouldn't right. eat the peas, but you drank that mm -hmm. weird draught, and now you're like hallucinating Lena, and you're in the middle of a meeting, but you don't forgot how you got there. Big chilling, big chilling. And I think the show, I think the show is doing the thing where you, you know, if you have a main character or a storyline you're trying to really prop up as like the hero storyline, which I'm assuming is Rhaenyra, I think that you, you can't, you have to have her down and out at some points so that her ascension to the big victories will be better toward the end of the season because we are about halfway through the season at this point, Mari. Yeah, we're at the middle, of the middle of the way. So I can imagine that the tide is going to start to turn, so we can get you know some big climactic moments on the other side. Um, but you had to really, you know, um, cut them off at the legs a little bit er early on, so that it's not just the Damon show. I think that we got we're about to get the Damon show, but we gotta they're gonna make us wait for it a little bit. You know, um, they're gonna wait yeah. for a while before he shows up and does what Damon does best. I totally agree. Uh, I, I I really agree on that. So like these next few episodes are going to be interesting because I, I like the pacing of the first four was, I think it was good, but again, like every episode is not, it cannot be like three days, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and, and that's what it's been. And so these last four episodes, they have a lot to kind of, put in here and they're going to have to weave their way from like the battle to battle, like small skirmish to small skirmish. Um, so it, it's going to be very, very interesting. I can't wait. And, yeah. We'll be sad. Mari, is there anything else from the book? Um, no, that's, that's about it. Rip to a real one. Rip um, to a real one. Pour one out, pour some mead out for a uh, big niece, you know, yeah. and maybe I miss her already. Yeah, mm -hmm. and at least uh, you know, you know, she was ride or die. She did both in the end, and it's okay. <laughs> you know, we we do move because uh, you know it's war. This is war, and uh, it's a very exciting war to say the least. So uh, thank you all for checking out our most recent recap. This was so much fun. We got a lot mm -hmm. more uh, recaps coming on the horizon. But in the meantime, Mari, 
what you got going on? Um, you can find me over on Crime Scene, a uh, true crime podcast with Sarah Carradine. We are taking a break this week, so um, but you can still catch up. Next next time, we will be joined by Mr. Chappelle here hey. to cover The Man with a Thousand Kids. Ooh, boy. <laughs> and I have some opinions about him, so you definitely need to tune in because I'm already <laughs> ready to talk mess about this dude because what you freaky frog this nasty man <laughs> so you can go to robhousewebsite.com slash uh crime feed in order to subscribe there or just uh type in crime scene that's crime s-e-e-n wherever you get your podcast um that's it i'm also on twitter at mari talks too much that's too like the number two you know tweeting about all sorts of things over there hopefully you you checked out our bt awards coverage last week we had a lot of fun over here on the recap kickback. I, I left Westeros for a hot little minute to talk about uh, the BET Awards. We had so much fun. So I hope you're subscribed to Recap Kickback uh, at recapkickback.com slash subscribe. So, yeah, but that's yes. it. No, Mari, this has been great. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, again, a, a BET Awards reactions were uh, posted on our YouTube page and in your podcast feeds. Uh, the Black Barbie documentary on Netflix, we reviewed that. It was me, LaTanya, and Gia. Uh, we have uh, Supercell on Netflix, the number two show on Netflix right now. We're covering that. It should be on your podcast feeds this week, but only if you're subscribed. So make sure you go to recapkickback.com slash subscribe to keep up with all that content and more. I think I'm going to be talking about the Olympics soon. Um, it's coming up and, uh, you know, we got a lot of people that I want to highlight and talk about in the Olympics. So there'll be a lot of coverage about that coming your way too. If you are subscribed to the podcast, you can even join our Facebook group, recapkickback.com slash Facebook. Uh, we'll take you to our Facebook group. It's private. Get in there. You'll get all the updates. You know, we're just starting a little a little recap kickback community, uh, and I want you to be a part of it. Come join Mari and I for conversations because we got a lot more stuff to come. Uh, but you can uh, follow me on all social media platforms at Recap Kickback uh, to keep up with all of that and more for Mari and for myself. It's been a crazy one on House of the Dragon, but you ain't got to go home. Uh, you just can't stay here. Uh, we will catch you all next week. Until then, peace.